Hello, and welcome to Model Airplane Maker. In this episode, I'll be building something a little different. It is a one quarter scale Corsair instrument panel and gun sight by Aero Cockpit. This was a fun project and made for a great display piece. Model makers tend to be history buffs or aviation enthusiasts. I'm certainly a fan of Corsairs. An Aero Cockpit is a company uh, from Europe that has come along and has created a series of one quarter scale and one fifth scale instrument panels for aircraft. These are mainly designed for radio controlled models, but they are good enough to make displays and they have all sorts of them. If you go onto their website, you can see. The kits come unassembled and the componentry is all separately bagged and has some very straightforward instructions. So construction of these instrument panels is very straightforward. As you can see, each one of these instruments comes pre-assembled in that the instrument is already contained in its own plastic gauge with a clear plastic cover. And comparing them to pictures of actual instrument panels for the Corsair, they're very accurate. They slip in the back of the instrument panel with uh, just a little bit of pressure with your fingers. Be a little bit careful because if you press too hard, you could maybe crack the instrument panel, but I had no trouble fitting these things in. In fact, the only uh, difficulty at this point was making sure that the alignment is correct. If it wasn't though, I just popped the instrument out, realigned it, popped it back in. Doesn't need glue. But if you want to have glue to make it a little bit more secure, certainly uh, you could do that from behind the instrument panel without any problem at all. A very nice detail touch with the aero cockpit instrument panel is the screws that they include with the kit. I believe they are molded in resin uh, in black. So all I did was spray paint it with some silver and I'm using my nippers to cut out each screw. They're not very long, but you don't need too much length when, they, when you're applying them to the kit. In each case, all of the holes are pre-drilled in the instrument panel as well. So when it comes to installing the screws, all you need is a Phillips head screwdriver and gently or carefully placing the screw onto it and then aligning it with the hole. This takes a little bit of uh, practice, but they do screw in um, easily and I didn't feel the need to glue them, but of course, like the instruments, if you want to, you could probably easily glue them from the other side. The next step involves placement of the placards onto the instrument panel. They are thick stickers and they go down very easily all I did was just follow the instructions on the in the manual or the, the instruction sheet and I just placed them where it indicated the only tricky part to this is just making sure that they are straight and aligned if you do make a mistake or if they're slightly um, out of alignment they can be taken up easily with uh, with a blade you just have to pull up one corner they are thick enough so that they will kind of pop off 
and, uh, and you can easily realign them. At this point, I had to figure out a way of mounting the gun sight. The hole in the instrument panel on the Corsair held some sort of connection that fit on the bottom of the real gun sight. In this case, I'm not exactly being prototypical here, but I found a one centimeter in diameter wood dowel to help me. It actually comes from my daughter's Tinker Toy uh, box. Sorry, kid, but needed to be done. <laughs> At any rate, uh, very easily cut to the right length. So all I'm trying to do is was all I tried to do was figure out a way that I could mount this thing in a way that looked semi-realistic, and uh, and I really needed to uh, make sure in terms of the measurement that I cut it to the right length. Here I'm using the miter box that I uh, bought a few years ago for model making. And um, it only involves, well, the hard part is only just finding the right length to cut the 45 degree angle so that it would bend the right way. Also, at the back of the gun sight, there is a 45 degree angle. So I thought that was excellent because all I needed to do was have a flat section of this dowel and I could easily mount the gun sight on it once I was done. So that was very handy too. It was almost like this Tinker Toy was perfectly created for this application. That old saying of measure twice and cut once is definitely on display here. I really wanted to make sure that I got this cut right and that um, I used the miter box properly in order to make sure that the start of that 45 degree cut fell exactly where it needed to. I'm not sure if I'm demonstrating it too well with this shot, but what I was really ensuring that I was doing was starting that cut exactly where the start of that 45 degree angle had to be. And then the last part of this is just measuring an appropriate amount uh, of distance for the holder to jet out from the instrument panel so that everything would fit properly. The kit came with three indicator lights that went on the panel. They are all the same in terms of shape. I thought of maybe masking them and airbrushing them, but they were kind of uh, compound curves that the masking would have been rather difficult actually. So I decided to go about this using uh, or brush painting and my standard procedure on this is to first do a layer of silver or aluminum or whatever bright uh, metallic color you have on hand. 
in this case I used uh, flat aluminum and then the color of the lens goes on top of that. The only piece of advice that I have for this step is you don't you want the paint to have a little bit be a bit more thin in terms of being able to work with it but you definitely don't want it runny or else it's going to go all over the place on you. So I'm just being very careful mixing a little bit of the thinner with my uh, acrylic paint uh, to the point where I have it to the you know it's workable but it's not going to make a drop and then run all over the part on me. Once the silver paint on the indicator lights is dried, I now paint the colors on the indicator lights. Two are red, one is green. The red one I use to me is clear red, and like the silver, I want to have it thin uh, compared to what's in the bottle, but not runny so that as soon as I apply the brush to the part, the, the paint runs all over the place. So you'll have to do a little bit of experimenting. Uh, to keep things safe, just take a lot of the paint off the brush after you mix it. Just do a little dip and then that way um, you'll have a controllable amount of paint. You'll be able to uh, work that paint around. If, um, if anything, it's just covering the silver with the, uh, the gloss clear paint. If you do make a mistake and if it does run, it's it's to me acrylic easily cleaned up just take some thinner wipe it off the part or if it's dried a little bit you can even use some windex and then you just start over again with the silver
Now that the instrument panel is pretty much assembled, I decided to mount it to one of those clear frames that I got at, in this case, Walmart. This frame is designed for a 8 by 10 inch photograph. I mix some two-part epoxy. I'm just placing a little dabs of epoxy on the backs of, uh, of the instruments. And then I'm just carefully going to, once, I, once it's all filled with enough glue, I'm just going to press it onto the glass frame. It's epoxy, it should hold, especially if all I'm ever gonna do is, uh, is hang it on the wall. I kept the um, example image with in the frame because I noticed that it's actually aligned very nicely. Um, it's level. So that helped me place the instrument panel within the frame. Now I'm just spreading some epoxy on my gun sight holder, placing it very gently into the hole at the top of the instrument panel. And as I'm pressing it in, I am just aligning it so that the gun sight is level. Epoxy takes a little bit to dry, so you have some uh, leeway in terms of making adjustments. And now I'm gluing in, again using epoxy, the adjustment knobs to certain of the instruments that are required. It's just a, a matter of a steady hand, a little bit of epoxy, and then just placing the part on the instrument panel. And it goes by fairly quickly. And the last bit that I've put on is my own label. I used some laser printable Avery two by three inch 
labels that I ran through my printer. And um, the idea here just to display what it is, what panel it is, and I uh, just put a little symbol down there. It's almost like it was a something you'd find in a museum. I kept the piece of tape on the back plate of the see-through frame so that I could align the, uh, the label on there. All I'm trying to do now is press it in so that I don't leave any air bubbles. At this point, I just take the first plane of glass, place it over the rear one, and then I place the frame around it all, and the project is done. So there it is, all complete, ready to hang on the wall. This is the F4U Corsair instrument panel by Aero Cockpit. Once again, a great little project, makes for some great wall art for any sort of aviation enthusiast. Or if you want, you can even put it into an RC aircraft. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, and you think that others might like it too, please feel free to subscribe and let everyone else know about the channel. Thank you.